The Anyhill UM1 lets stability guide the ride with a scooter that is reliable, efficient and a joy to use. The UM1 nails its assignment as a budget scooter by delivering on every plane that we would expect from a $599 purchase. Combining a sleek design with a user-friendly setup, simple one-click folding mechanism and surprisingly strong brakes, it lets simplicity reign supreme. But most importantly, this scooter sports a valuable LG battery that is usually found in scooters of a much higher price tag. The LG battery treats you to hundreds more charge cycles than the average Chinese battery, creating a scooter that is long-lasting and cost-effective. Overall, its performance, portability, and value for money ate its status as being one of our favorite budget buys. I've spent the last four months testing the Anyhill UM1, and I've summarized my findings into 11 things that I love and four things that I think could be improved. But as always, before I spill the beans on my experience with the scooter, let me give you a quick overview of what you can expect from it, as well as who I recommend it for. The title of this scooter might suggest that it's crafted for tackling adventurous inclines, but in reality, the Anyhill is suited to gentle inclines. Its generously sized and cushioning tires provide a smooth journey that absorbs the jolting vibrations of the road, while its set of brakes offers extra security and control in built up environments. They even deliver one of the best stopping distance that we have ever recorded. The specs on offer are finely tuned for casual rides around the city, plus portability plays a big role in the UM1's allure as it has a simple one-click mechanism. The mechanism and beats the likes of more expensive models like the Unagi Model 1 and its famed one-click folding feature. What's more, this scooter is the lightest of its competitors and weighs in a mere 29.7 pounds. Combined with the sublime folding mechanism and thin stem, it is extremely easy to lift and carry. So, with all of that in mind, if you're searching for a budget scooter that combines great build quality with practicality, you can't get much better than the Anyhill UM1. If that sounds like a scooter that you could be interested in, then keep watching as I unpack its design, features, build and ride quality, performance, and how it stacks up against its competitors. One of the UM1's key selling points is its LG battery, which provides far more longevity than the cheaper Chinese equivalents that can be found on its competitors. While cheaper Chinese batteries are often chosen by manufacturers to bring the cost of a scooter down, they deteriorate quicker than their LG counterparts. Just as your phone battery decays the more you charge it, the cheaper cells used in the scooter batteries do the same. So with the UM1, you'll get more mileage over a longer period. Impressively, it's just one of three models in its price category to have a high quality LG battery, with the other two being models from GoTrax, including the G Max Ultra and the XR Ultra. All told, the UM1's 7.8 amp battery dishes out a maximum range of 18.6 miles and a realistic range of 13 miles when riding at full pelt and power. The aluminium alloy used for the entirety of the frame is well regarded in the industry and is used by the vast majority of brands, while reinforced plastic and rubber is used for the consumables. Beyond the materials though, the design of the UM1 impressed us. It's not often budget scooters come as well equipped as the UM1. From the high quality LG battery to the intelligent battery management system that maintains the health of the battery by detecting unusual temperatures, as well as preventing short circuiting, under voltage, overcurrent, overcharging, and over discharging, the Anyhill UM1 not only sports a durable exterior, but quality runs in its veins. 
The UM1 weighs 29.7 pounds, which is considered extremely light in the world of electric scooters. In fact, it's lighter than all of its closest rivals. Yet, despite its featherweight frame, the Anyhill finds itself in the higher end of the low capacity rankings of entry level scooters and can support up to 250 pounds of rider weight. Based on our test, we found that you get the best performance when you weigh below 220 pounds. It has one of the best one-click folding mechanisms that we've ever tested. Through one simple sweeping movement, the mechanism neatly locks the stem into place, making it extremely easy to fold and unfold. When the stem is folded, a latch on the back of the handlebar snaps into a small hook on the rear fender. The motion is rapid, easy and perfect for when you want to transport the scooter. This well executed function plays a big role in its victory over other budget scooters for portability. The UM1 sports a set of handlebars that are made from a precipitation hardened, stress tested aluminium alloy and feel secure beneath your hands. As expected, the handlebars feature the same IP54 water resistance rating that the rest of the frame is wrapped in. But of course, this isn't enough to protect your clasp on those wet and wild rides, so the handlebars are home to a set of first rate hand grips. The circular pattern rubber offers excellent control and instills confidence. In fact, they are the best hand grips that we have tested on a budget scooter. They far surpass those on its competitors in the sub $600 price bracket. The throttle on the right and the electronic brake paddle on the left are both ergonomically positioned and comfortable to use, even when maxing out the top speed and range. Similarly, the brake lever is well placed, comfortable to reach and complementary to the minimalist design. Plus, its safety is matched by the scooter's lock steering, meaning that the handlebars cannot be over rotated. The frame boasts a simple design that is sleek, stylish and unrevealing of its affordable price tag. The slim, hexagonally shaped stem gives it a slender aesthetic while the long, thin and deeply treaded deck provides enough space to find a comfortable stance. The combination of the soft curving lines embedded into the frame alongside its geometric form results in a unique aesthetic that is unlike a generic scooter frame. With its matte black paint job and stark white branding minimally applied, the UM1 sports a satisfyingly neat design. You can also opt for a white or blue chassis, depending on your preference. The UM1 features a set of 8.5 inch pneumatic tires. Their plush design allows for a smooth ride on most surfaces with vibrations being almost entirely engulfed by the rubber. It's touches like these that make a big difference to the riding experience and make it that much more satisfying. Equally, the crisscross tread delivers traction at all times. This goes hand in hand with the strong brakes since the tires mold and grip to the ground, providing extra security during the most abrupt halts. I also found that the rounded profile of the tires, so the curvature of them front on, made carving from side to side feel a breeze while instilling confidence at top speeds. Packing a 36 volt, 350 watt motor, the UM1 shares the same motor power as the majority of its similarly priced competitors. With a top speed of 16 miles per hour and an acceleration rate that will take you from 0 to 15 miles per hour in 6.8 seconds, its performance is where we would expect it to be. There are, however, faster scooters when comparing the Any Hill to other models in a $500 price range, but for what it's worth, the power our credentials on offer are ideal for busy urban environments. If you'd like to learn more about those other models that I just mentioned, then keep watching. 
By now, it's apparent that the UM1 puts build quality at the forefront of its priorities, and its set of brakes is testament to that. Sporting a rear disc brake and front e-brake, the scooter offers excellent control when coming to a stop at any speed. To find a scooter that spreads its braking power across both wheels in the budget category is rare, and the result of any hill's decision to do so is clear. The UM1 stops in just two 0.2 meters from 15 miles per hour. This is hands down the best braking performance of any budget electric scooter that we have ever tested. Usually we say that a stopping distance of between three and 3.4 meters is good with anything towards the lower number being great. In the case of the UM1, its stopping distance is outstanding. It even beats premium scooters like the Inakim Oxo, which cost $2,599, boasts full hydraulic brakes, and has a stopping distance of just 2.7 meters. Similarly, if we compare it to some of its closest rivals, they don't come close. The Turboant M10, for instance, takes 4.9 meters to stop, while the Turboant X7 Pro and Horizon both take five meters. I was particularly impressed with the electronic brake. It was surprisingly strong. The e-brake reacts to your grip at a sensitivity that is expected and safe. Simply put, the UM1 has some of the best performing brakes out of our entire 140 plus strong database of electric scooters. Embracing its status as a modern method of commuting, the UM1 features a mobile app that allows you to view the same metrics that are shown on the display, including your speed, battery level, and the status of the lights, so whether they are on or off. While its function is limited, its main benefit comes from being able to remotely lock the scooter. When enabled, the digital lock engages the electronic brake to prevent the scooter from being rolled away. This adds extra peace of mind, but I still suggest using a physical lock if you plan to leave your scooter unattended in public. The UM1 sports a K-Mark approved headlight and taillight that offer visibility at night. With the former being placed below the center of the handlebars, it illuminates a wide and comforting portion of the way ahead. Taken from the bicycle industry, the K-Mark headlight gets its name from the road traffic licensing regulation, where it's been put through various tests to prevent glare to opposing road users. Okay, so those are all the reasons why I love the Anyhill UM1, but let's take a look at the things that could be improved. When comparing the UM1's top speed to 20 comparable models in a $500 price range around its $599 price tag, it suffers from a low ranking. But whilst this may seem unfavorable at first glance, it's important to note that the UM1 does share the same size motor as many of the other models that seemingly come before it in the rankings. Nevertheless, the Horizon 10.4 takes the top spot for speed, coming in at zippy 25 miles per hour. This scooter sports a 500 watt motor, which is not only 43% larger than the Anyhill's 350 watt motor, but it's also rated at 48 volts rather than the 36 volts, which results in more torque and a 31% faster acceleration rate. Moving our attention to battery power, several models outperform the UM1 for maximum range. While the Turboant V8 with its dual 7.5 amp batteries and 50 mile manufacturer quoted range takes the top spot, it's the GoTrax G-Max Ultra that's really worth considering thanks to its large 36 volt 17.5 amp LG battery. Now this battery is the same quality as that found in the Anyhill, yet it holds 2.2 times more energy. And as a result, delivers 26 more miles off a single charge. The G-Max Ultra does, however, cost 250 pounds more. Now for those of you that want to keep your budget tight within the region of the Anyhill's 
$599 price tag, I recommend checking out the Turboant X7 Max if a larger battery and range are important to you. For context, the X7 Max has a battery that stores 28% more energy whilst also sharing the same price as the Anyhill. It does, however, use standard battery cells, meaning that long-term performance isn't as good as the Anyhill. I pulled together a speed to weight comparison of 15 models that sit within five pounds on either side of the UM1's 29.7 pounds. And just like the speed versus price comparison that we previously discussed, the UM1 shares the same size motor with almost the entire lineup of the scooters that come before it. However, if we draw our eye to the top of the chart, it's the newly released Mosquito that is crowned king of the hill with its super compact 29 pound frame, 48 volt, 500 watt motor, and a top speed of 25 miles per hour. Nonetheless, this extra pace comes at a cost of $999, whilst the UM1 is a more affordable $599. Now, not for the first time in this review, the Turboant M10 gives the UM1 a run for its money with a cheaper price tag of $450, a similar weight of 29.8 pounds, and a higher top speed of 20 miles per hour. As for battery power, it's the Turboant X7 Max that tops the mileage versus weight comparison of all models that sit within 10 pounds of the UM1. It has a maximum range of 32 miles versus the Anyhill's 18.6 miles. The X7 Max does, however, have a significantly bulkier frame than the Anyhill, making it far less portable. The handlebars come to a center with a small LED display. As with most displays, it shows your speed, remaining battery, and running mode. However, it could benefit from being brighter since I found it was at times difficult to read. One area of the scooter's blueprint that would benefit from an improvement is if the exterior cables were kept closer to the frame. Most notable are the brake and motor cables that overhang from the stem and neck. So do the pros outweigh the cons? Well, it depends. As mentioned, one of the UM1's key selling points is its LG battery, which provides far more longevity than cheap Chinese equivalents that can be found in its competitors. With many scooters opting for a lower quality battery to keep prices down, the UM1 still has a competitive price tag with durability that can't be matched. Battery aside, the scooter hits every other mark that you'd expect. With a design that promotes style, safety and security, the UM1 offers a low risk for a low price. If we consider all of the sub $600 scooters that we've tested, the UM1 stands out as one of the best. It outperforms other models where build quality is concerned, plus no other scooter comes close to the UM1's braking prowess. It even beats models that are seven times its price and boast top of the line hydraulic braking systems. But if the box at the top of your checklist is raw power and you're willing to expand your budget, other models offer more. Overall though, with all things considered, the UM1 has a well-rounded profile of performance and as a result, it delivers good value for money. So what do you think about the Anyhill UM1? Are there any other points that you would have added? If so, let me know in the comments. For those of you that would like to know what other scooters I recommend as alternatives or want to see our full performance test, you can read our full review on electricscooterinsider.com, which I've linked to in the description below. Now, if you're ready to hit the buy button, you can either scan this QR code or click the links in the description. As always guys, if you found value from this video, do me a favor, smash that like button, come on, and subscribe to become an Electric Scooter Insider. Your support is appreciated. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.